Hey, what's up, you sexy motherfuckers? Welcome to another episode of Dumb Blonde. Today, I have a motherfucking icon in the house. If you grew up on the West Coast, you definitely know this name. I grew up in Vegas. My manager grew up in Cali. We are so stoked to have him on. Mickey Avalon. What's up, baby? Hey, how you doing? Good. How are you? I'm so happy you're here. Yeah, me too. Just hanging in the crib, quarantine style. Dude, uh, so for you, those of you who don't know, Mickey and I were supposed to be together this month and actually in person, but then this fucking pandemic happened. And so we're here and we're going to do an interview with him, but we're going to bring Mickey back on and we're going to have him, you know, do a full length thing. Maybe have you come judge some naked bitches getting naked on the uh, podcast, trying out for, to be Miss Dumb Blonde. So um, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Like where you grew up, your, a little bit of your backstory for people who don't know you. I was born and raised in uh, Los Angeles and yeah, just grew up out here been here my whole life except for a few years I, I moved to Oregon and just got in I don't know I just kind of got into music by a fluke like maybe 15 years ago yeah just just fucking around with my friends and then uh, something became of it so just once it happened I didn't want to lose that the opportunity so I just tried to keep it going and it's been going ever since I had to tell you that you and I were meant to cross paths because I used to own a clothing line called Cupcakes and Chronic in Vegas and you were playing at the beauty bar one night with Nikki Lipstick and I was was supposed to be there but I couldn't make it that night and I was so bummed so that was like my chance to actually like have got to meet you and hang with you and stuff so I regretted that ever since then and then when I made the podcast my first thing to uh, my manager was I was like I gotta get Mickey Avalon on so for a lot of you that don't know Mickey has you've had some of your songs in movies like Harold and Kumar right had like yep, my uh, dick Harold and Kumar uh The Hangover uh We're the Millers there's been a bunch yeah no like you're iconic as fuck and it's people probably don't even recognize your name until they hear your songs too you know like they're like oh my god like yeah you know like our younger generation because they're all just fucking assholes so all they know yeah. they don't know people's <laughs> names they just know music so I'm sure as soon as they hear like your music played they're like oh shit we do we do know who Mickey is I think I saw that you are dropping an album coming up soon yep I got a uh, a single coming out on May 1st so I don't know when this plays but uh it'll be uh, next week next actually mm -hmm. so yeah, so I'll probably be around the same time this is out. Awesome. Uh, the song is called Ultra Violence. And then I have a full length called Speak of the Devil, which is June 26th, I believe. That is so cool. And it's going to be a full EP? No, full length record. Full length like record. songs. Yay. And then in, bet in between those two things, I got it. I have another EP coming out with this dude called Landon McNamara. He's a, he's a Hawaiian dope reggae dude. We got a few songs together. I'm excited. So. Uh, and you're going to be dropping them on Apple and just all uh, All those music. things, yep. Uh, Apple, Spotify, whatever, however people listen to music these days. And then, uh, yeah, the Landon one comes out on May 22nd. So, yeah, like the whole month. Yay. We made, we made a bunch of shit before uh, everyone went into quarantine. I still want to be recording now, but the guy I record with, He's just not having people over at the studio, so. Yeah, I can't blame him. This shit's fucking weird. So you yeah. s you said you got into music on a fluke. Can you explain that to me a little bit? Well, we just have fun, you know, make songs, kind of fuck around. And then I was living at a sober living house at the time. And my friend, Simon Rex, Dirt Nasty, mm -hmm. he was handing out the CDs at, at clubs, which I didn't know he was doing because I had a curfew and had to be home by midnight. So then when someone who ended up being my first manager got the CD and then called me me and I didn't know anyone was even hearing these CDs so I thought it was Simon prank calling me and then like 10 <laughs> minutes into the call I realized it was real yeah and then that was kind of the beginning of the whole thing so once once it started I just kind of hit the hit the floor running but it wasn't like a it wasn't like supposed to be my just my wasn't career. supposed to happen I think so rich so pretty was probably my anthem from the t from my fucking early 20s till now I will wake up and still bump that shit and still quote it like the lyrics are just so iconic in it you said that you were living in a sober living house do you want to touch on that a little bit and tell it like your success story yeah that was just a long time ago you know i got into drugs as a young child and um now i mean i'm not like totally sober now but i'm not it's all right are we all really sober come yeah, on <laughs> but no, no, no. we all have our own vices so. and shit uh so you yeah. were you were doing uh needles heroin yeah. or whatever um one thing about yeah. one thing about my podcast i love to bring you guys on like especially like you know instagram celebrities musicians stuff like that i love for you guys to come on and kind of tell your story of like winning because there's so many yeah. people that listen that follow me that are struggling with you know problems that i try to counsel every day and i feel like whenever you guys come 
come on to and just kind of help show them the light and show them the way that really helps too. Yeah, no, I definitely, there's, there is definitely a way out when you're in the middle of it. It doesn't seem like it's possible, but, uh, you know, if you, if you find so it helps also if you got something you love to do, you know, yeah. in the beginning you need to get some, you know, if you're, if you're caught up in that, you're going to need to get some help, you know, you're going to need to get your friends or family or whatever, AA, yeah. whatever, whatever work, you know, whatever did you, doing, everyone's got a different, did you go to rehab and did rehab help you out and stuff like that? I went to a few rehabs. It, I never really got, never really helped me out. I did. Uh, I mean, I guess maybe it helped me out. At the time, but <laughs> right. I did a for a little bit. Now I just kind of, now I just do my own thing. But gotcha. I think yeah. at the beginning you need like a full, whatever your support whatever. system. Yeah. Yeah. Support system. Absolutely. So when this pandemic clears up, are we, can we look forward to a Mickey Avalon tour? Yep. It was already being kind of started and then all this happened. I mean, that's, we were going to do your podcast. Yeah. You guys are here on yeah. tour. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so definitely a tour. I just don't, nobody knows when it's going to end and everyone has, I don't listen to anyone because it's all different. I'm going to have some people are like next year. Some people are like next month. I know so we keep hearing. Not- yeah. We keep hearing that nobody's going to be like my husband. Cause he's a touring musician. They have been telling us that nobody's going to be able to, to do groups of 50 or more until fucking like they're saying into late 2021, which is that's, crazy. That's the one I feel sounds the most normal. I mean, it's crazy, but I feel like that's probably the realest one because, in Canada, they're told them like, yeah, they're not doing shit till ne- you know late next year. So right, I'm just hanging in there. Um, I, I paint, so I just been do- doing a lot of painting. I know. I need a. I need you to paint a bunny painting a for bunny, me. Yeah, I, I we're, we're moving into our new house this week, so I'm like collecting all these types of artwork and stuff. And I would love to. I'll buy it. I would love to have a piece <laughs> of yours. I told. I was reading. I, I was reading your comments the other night. They are fucking crazy. That, <laughs> those were the craziest comments I've ever had. When you said that, I'm like, my comments aren't normal. And then I read that, and yeah, I was two like, people Whoa. talking about herpes and stuff that's not they're not normally like that I was like what the fuck is going on um that's so awesome well I'm so happy that you came on and I definitely want to have you back on normally my podcasts go a little bit longer but like I said I want to save all the good stuff for whenever you come back on in person but is why don't you tell people where they can find you and plug anything that you want to plug so that they can look you up and start jamming your music and all that jazz Uh, all right uh on Instagram it's just Mickey underscore Avalon and then on Facebook and Twitter I think it's just Mickey Avalon and then yeah I'm on spot I'm on all the if you just look up Mickey Avalon yeah uh, I got like five albums out I'd say my favorite one of them is probably loaded, but uh, go get my, you know, do my, bump my new shit. I love I just all put of out them. A video called Woke AF, which is like, you know, kind of talking shit about this new uh, politically correct culture, social justice warriors. So check out that video, but watch the one on my website, MickeyAvalon.com, because the YouTube one is uh, censored. Awesome. Thank you so much for being here, Mickey. I really appreciate it. Thank you. You too. I'll see you soon when this is over. Yeah, for sure. Thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of Dumb Blonde, and I will see you guys next week.